Hello, welcome to this presentation on the new zoning code proposed for Thompson Center. At the end of the slideshow, we hope you will have a basic understanding of the structure of our proposed code and will be comfortable enough to open it up and take a look. The Recode Topsum project includes two parts, an overall reorganization of the full zoning ordinance in Chapter 225 of the Town Code, plus new zones and regulations for what we are now calling Topsum Center. This presentation is focused on the new Topsum Center zones. The new zones are intended to implement the comprehensive plan vision for the area through new design standards and placemaking tools that incorporate sustainable development practices. The intent is to clearly lay out expectations for new developments in order to streamline review and approval processes. Our project kicked off around March of 2021 with the first phase called Discovery and Diagnosis. This first phase provided our team the time to get to know Topsum, including the townspeople and their preferences, the physical characteristics of the town, as well as past planning efforts. At the end of Phase 1, a short report was issued to set the stage for development of the new code during Phase 2. During Phase 2, our team met with the Comprehensive Planning Implementation Committee, along with multiple town staff, to craft and vet the new code. The public review draft is now available for community review and feedback and what is the current Phase 3 of the project. The next phase will be the formal adoption of the code, hopefully starting early 2024. The 2019 Comprehensive Plan Update serves as our guiding framework, establishing several big ideas gleaned from community input and focused on the center of Topsum. The draft code is intended to work towards implementing these goals, specifically the five highlighted here. The new code deliberately orients development to the street and sidewalk, creating more activity, gathering spaces, and social interaction on the street. The new code supports smaller scale development and home-based businesses in mixed-use and live-work spaces within the Topsum Center area, and the new code supports a variety of new housing types. The comprehensive plan established the center of Topsum as the intentional growth sector. This sector is designed to guide growth to what we are now calling Topsum Center. The purpose of defining this growth area is to conserve and preserve the rural feel of the rest of the town and protect existing neighborhoods. The comprehensive plan specifically called for updating the town's zoning regulations in order to establish design standards and placemaking tools to support and guide the redevelopment of Topsom Center over time. The plan also recommended utilizing form-based regulations to ensure the new zoning and design standards reflect the character, history, growth, and potential of Towson Center. So what do we mean by form-based regulation? Well, since zoning was first established to separate uses, such as industry and housing, for public health benefits, today most zoning is still use-based. In other words, towns are mapped where residential uses, commercial uses, and industrial uses are allowed, separating those uses and regulating very little of the building form. Form-based zoning, on the other hand, is much more focused on building form, relying more on building design for compatibility between a mix of uses. Uses are still regulated, but the focus and organization is based upon building form. Think about a typical American Main Street that includes a mix of uses, but in a very specific walkable form. The mapped zones in form-based codes are created based on similar building patterns, often using a building typology to organize the regulations. Form-based codes are intended to be used in walkable locations where the design standards are concentrated on the street facades and the buildings work together to create districts of activity. The goal of form-based regulations is a high level of predictability, obtained through the use of objective, prescriptive, and meaningful metrics, well illustrated and often laid out in a table format. And finally, a clearly written proactive set of regulations can result in easier development approvals, avoiding quagmires of discretionary subjective design guidelines. So let's take a quick look at the proposed regulations. As mentioned before, our project includes a reorganization of the full zoning ordinance in Chapter 225 of the Town Code. Here you see the proposed table of contents. 
This presentation is focused only on the articles that address Topsom Center. Article 2 establishes the new Topsom Center zones and their building form regulations. Articles 6 and 7 address uses and accessory uses for the whole town, including the Topsom Center zones. And Article 8 includes specific building design regulations for the Topsom Center zones only. Let's look at the proposed new zones first, along with the map illustrating where each zone is proposed to be located. The comprehensive plan created an illustrative vision for several of the sub-areas of Topsom Center. Those sub-areas directly informed the establishment of our proposed new zones. Seven new zones are proposed to implement the vision for each of the sub-areas of Topsom Center. The name and general location of the lower, middle, and upper village zones is retained from the current code, though the regulations within those zones have been rewritten. The Topsom Fair Mall area has been divided into two zones since Park Drive has a very different character and set of uses than Topsom Fair Mall Road. The Crooker District is unique and has a clear vision established in the comprehensive plan, and the annex is slated specifically for a mix of housing types. Here you see the first two pages of Article 2, Topsom Center Zones. Let's take a minute to notice how the layout of the proposed code is organized to get as much information on the page using two columns of text. Further, the information is organized more in outline form than narrative in order to facilitate a quick scan to see the types of regulations on the page. The right-hand page includes the first set of building regulations by the zone. Notice the table format for the regulations key to the diagrammatic plan above. Let's take a closer look at these regulations. Within the table header in dark gray, you see the Topsom Center zones listed. Step one is to look at the zone map and determine your zone. Step two is to view this table to determine your basic building location on the site. Down the left-hand column are the typical regulations you might see for a zone front, side, and rear setbacks, plus overall site coverage. Note that the front setback is a range, including a minimum setback and a maximum setback. This is to require the building to be located towards the street with the parking to the side or rear. Also note the illustration shows two options, a single building on a lot on a corner, or a series of buildings on a single lot surrounding a courtyard. The table also includes a courtyard setback to ensure the courtyard is usable and village scale. The third step is to determine your building type. This table in the document is a key to which building types are allowed in which zones, again with the zones arrayed across the top and the building types along the left-hand column. So for example, if your lot is in the lower village, you could create a village building a traditional storefront, or a row building, or a civic building, which is only allowed for civic and institutional uses, such as a church or library, and also requires approval to be used. So let's take a look at some images of uh, the key building types. During phase one of the project, we defined a building typology for Topsom Center intended to carry forward the historic character of Main Street and other regional towns' architecture while also implementing the vision in the comprehensive plan. The building types are illustrated here. Village buildings take many of their cues from houses with pitched roofs, gabled ends, and clapboard siding, evenly distributed windows, and a door on the front. Traditional storefronts, typical of many main streets, are highly walkable multi-story buildings, often with no side yards, and with storefront glass and an entrance on the ground floor front facade. Roofs are typically parapets, or low-pitched. Suburban storefronts are single-story commercial buildings, often with drive-throughs, mainly located in Topsom Fair Mall. The suburban storefront building type in the code is a combination of pedestrian orientation while still supporting automobile access. The general and row buildings provide a mix of housing types, including apartments, condominiums, and row houses or townhouses. And finally, two more flexible building types are included, the workshop warehouse building for industrial uses and the civic building for civic and institutional uses. Each building type includes a two-page set of regulations in addition to the building location regulations for the zone. 
The specific building type regulations in the table on the right address such items as building width, building segment width and connections, roof form, height, and windows and doors. Those regulations are key to the diagrammatic elevation on the left-hand page. In Article 6 of the regulations, uses allowed within all of the town zones are defined. The tops and center zones are those highlighted here in orange. Once you have determined your building regulations in Article 2, this table in Article 6 illustrates which uses are allowed on the lot, which uses require a conditional use approval, and which uses are prohibited. This short two-page table allows you to compare the uses allowed in different zones. Article 7 includes allowed accessory structures for all of the town zones, such as drive through facilities and fuel pumps. In the Topsom Center zones, these types of accessory structures are allowed only in the Topsom Fair Mall 1 zone and the Crooker District, consistent with the comprehensive plan strategies to locate the more pedestrian-focused uses in the village zones. Lastly, Article 8 includes a short series of general design standards that apply to all building types in the Topsom Center zones only. These standards are written with clear metrics for ease of use and approvals and include building facade elements such as window orientation, principal entrance detailing, and mechanical equipment location and screening. Perhaps most importantly, Article 8 includes building facade material standards organized for applicability to each building type in the Topsom Center zones. The purpose is to ensure Topsom Center buildings use high quality facade materials reflective of the character desired for each zone, especially on highly visible street facades. All of these regulations were written with the vision documented by the comprehensive plan in mind, where new walkable mixed use development is encouraged in the Topsom Center area but at a scale and character appropriate for the town. Thank you to town residents for their input into the comprehensive plan, which was critical toward ensuring these new regulations will implement their vision for the future of Topsom Center. We hope this presentation encourages you to take a deeper look at the new zoning code proposed for Topsom Center. And please send your comments and let us know your questions. Thank you for your time.